Hey guys, it's Bishop Josie here, and welcome to episode 60 of the Local to Global series. Now, I've done a, a little bit of writing on my notepad next to me, and I have essentially booked out, the, well, seven new storylines for us to run. So, I think, let me, let me give you a, a little bit of a brief update. The size is currently looking like this. We've got 85 in Ontario, 78 in Quebec, 76 in Manitoba. 62 in Saskatchewan, and 56 there in Alberta. Now, as you can see, we still we still need to get 77 in, well, essentially just the, the other two regions being Alberta and Saskatchewan now. And if we get those, we will go up to big size, because Manitoba's essentially already there. It's like one or two, one or two more TV shows. Actually, instead of, uh, instead of going out of there, we also only need two points as well to get a pay-per-view broadcaster in Mexico with uh, with medium-sized coverage. So that should hopefully come, I guess, by next episode. That'd be pretty decent. And uh, I think once we set that up, I might also potentially look at our current pay-per-view deals and seeing if we can get any better sort of broadcasting coverage uh, with an upgrade or something like that. Who knows, some might be available, we might be able to go up to big size, obviously, the, the bigger the broadcast coverage, the more fans get to see it, and the more fans, the more buyers, the more money you make. So, pretty pretty simple stuff there, um, and of course, if you didn't watch last episode, what the hell are you doing? Because last episode was absolutely incredible, I don't want to give too much away if you haven't, but go back right now, watch last episode, it was a long one. But uh, lots of different things happened. We signed a lot of people, a lot of workers for the developmental. Obviously, we talked about certain things being a women's division coming in in the near future. And then, of course, we also had Logan Wolfsbane versus Mobstar for the Unified World title. And I don't want to give that result away if you haven't seen it. And if you have seen it, well, then you obviously know who won and you know how good that match actually was. Anyway, um, let's see what we've got here. Uh, we've finally got Island Boy joining, uh, Chill. His contract's running out. He's actually Canadian. And he's actually not bad either, but the thing with him is he's got very low star quality and he's also got pretty low entertainment skills as well. Kind of uh, been with, yeah, SWF. Uh, whole career really I find that pretty strange um he's also confirmed to be leaving i don't i don't know i don't really think we need him to be honest yeah that's a that's a weird one because I, I really don't think we need him um but one one person i do want to sign actually let's let's go and sign this person and that is kid son juan now we want to sign him because he is actually the tag team partner for island boy apollo so I think we'll just get him on a handshake deal. He's 37 years old, likely in time decline. So yeah, I think just a just a handshake deal. That's yeah, that's fine. Eight hundred dollars, fifteen percent, pretty perfect if you ask me. Um, he's also pretty over. Does work for two other companies, but obviously we will be the uh the go to company, even if there is some schedule conflicts. As we are one of the biggest companies in the world now. We are ranked 8th. Which um, I haven't really looked at recently. But yeah, number 8 in the world. Pretty crazy. Alright, so let's let's get into this first show. Because I, I don't want this episode to go forever. And obviously the, the three TV show episodes do tend to, to go for quite a while. Anyway, just you know with the amount of content. Anyway, we've got Willie LaRue here. Help creating a fun and relaxed atmosphere backstage after finding a discarded karaoke machine. Anyway, do some meddling real quick, and then we will get into our storylines. Now, just going to put this out there right now. We are indeed going to do a rematch between Mobstar and Logan. We pretty much have to at this point. I, 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 can't, I can't see, one, the, the storyline implications of Mobstar essentially being one of the best champions we've ever had, um, how many title defenses did he actually have? Okay, he only had four. But to be fair, he versed some serious, serious competitors there. Um, 
as you can see, he, uh... How does he have four defenses? He has five. No, he has four. Okay, so he has, he, he won the title. As you can see, he won the title there against Davis, James, and Goldstein. Uh, then at a rematch against Davis, beat him in an I Quit match as well, which is pretty impressive. Uh, beat Aldis Blackfriar twice, two very, very good matches. Defeated Ozzy Goldstein once again, uh, and then finally losing to Logan Wolfsbane in that 98 rated match. Absolute classic of a match. Looks like the um, the prestige has gone up as well. During uh, during Mobstar's reign up to 74, which is pretty cool. Anyway, storyline. So so that one will continue. It's also at a 98 heat for the storyline. So I don't think we need to literally do anything for that. Uh, the push for Canada. This is an interesting one, but uh, we're going to leave this exactly the same. You might be wondering why, but that's one of our other only storylines that is actually remaining. Uh, and essentially, Gorman's going to have the month off. Brody comes back in about four days' time. And when Brody comes back, he's going to target Gary Walker. Essentially, for all the, the smack talk he's been talking uh, while Brody's been at home recovering. And of course, the, the shenanigans that he got up to against Graham Gorman. So that's our other storyline. Just these two. Uh, Graham probably won't be involved uh, for this month. But we might... Uh, we might continue that storyline even further into the, the sort of Warzone pay-per-view. Uh, this one can end. Well and good. All done. This one can end as well. Uh, the Coalition Tag Titles. Now, we are going to take... We're just going to take some workers out of this one because it, it can stay. Um, but obviously, we're just going to have the LA Stars take on the crew once again for the last time to uh, to see if... The crew, you know, Papa Swole, Public Enemy, see if they can actually get a victory back uh, and essentially win the titles from the LA Stars. Uh, and then this one, this one's interesting where I, I don't really want to end it, but I think I will because I, I do have a new storyline for Aldis and Goldstein and they're going to be actually, you know what, I could probably just take locking out of this one and uh we'll just add the opponents which is it's just going to be the money makers um and they're going to be taking on the newly formed sort of alliance tag team of goldstein who we are going to rename this episode as well after this first tv show uh they're going to be taking on the money makers so all this and goldstein so let's grab jackpot and let's grab stevie p as well just um just something for for all these guys to do it might even be able to elevate jackpot up to sort of main event level depending on how good it is um but i, I feel like we probably could give him a victory uh against goldstein all right so there are our four storylines there now all the rest are going to literally be new storylines so we're gonna have i don't want to add workers add storyline we're gonna go the new boys And it is literally going to be High Flying Hawaiian taking on Island Boy Apollo. Very, uh, very interesting sort of storyline here. We've got Hawaii versus Puerto Rico. And uh, obviously, I guess it's going to be a bit of a, like an island dominant. See who, or which country, or which, obviously Hawaii is a state, not a country. But which sort of island province, if you will, is going to be more dominant. And I, I just kind of like it. It's just a really easy way to implement both guys into the into the roster um and obviously uh island boy will be going into the tag division uh whereas high flying will probably stay a singles competitor unless we somehow get a kuma which would be very very cool all right our next storyline is going to be david stone so uh what should we call this storyline um Maybe let's go the the prince wants I don't know I was gonna go the prince wants the stones 
Yeah, I mean, we'll go with it. The prince wants the stones. Essentially, you know, a prince would want a crown, stones being gems. I don't know. It's just what popped into my head. Um, and that is, of course, going to be Princeton Price taking on David Stone. Simple, effective, and uh, essentially putting two, like, relatively good, you know, nearly 30-year-olds that are top-level talents against each other. And uh, they're both also former CWA workers, which I think is a little bit funny. Uh, up next, we're going to go with a tag team storyline here as well. Um, don't know what to call this one. I have literally no idea because I didn't really think about it. Um, it's going to be Young and Wasted taking on the Northern Lights. So let's go with... Um, let's go, let's call it the climb. And, um, it's basically, the, the climb is going to be Brett Kyle and Taylor Norton uh, trying to, to climb their way back to the, the number one contendership for the tag team titles. And, uh, Alton Vicious and Riddick Jordan are going to stand in their way. Or be, at least be their first, you know, competitors, first sort of storyline there as well. All right, so they're all done. Um, and our final storyline, this one I'm pretty excited about. And it is literally gonna be, let's, let's do it like this. Faith versus Goat. Simple as you like. And as you can see, Maddie Faith will be taking on the Goat of the Coalition. He will be taking on Davis Wayne Newton. Big, big sort of semi-main event there for the pay-per-view this month. Expecting a, a really high level match, although Matty Faith does still have his morale issues, which I'm really upset about. So unfortunate. Anyway, there's eight storylines, so I've got a lot to choose from, and we've got a lot to build to. I mean, we, we usually only have five matches uh, per show. Yeah, I, th I think that's everything. I think that's everything. Anyway, the way we're going to kick this off, we are going to have, I think, David Stone taking on Logan Wolfsbane. I think that's a, a pretty good main event. And uh, it was kind of something I wanted to at least try out pretty early. But we'll go we'll go 20 minutes. Obviously a non-title match. We're not going to be putting him into a, a title match this early. Had to get that sneeze out. All right. So Logan's going to win. Uh, it's going to be open called, slow built, decisive. Uh, but during the match, we are going to have interference onto Logan by Papa Swole and Public Enemy. So they're both getting involved at the behest of Mobster. And then we'll have a an angle following this as well. There we go. Let me, let me chuck this angle in as well real quick. So it's simply going to be Mobster onto Logan. Um, only with Mobster doing any talking as well. Uh, but basically... Gonna have Mobstar using his rematch clause to uh uh let's go at at paper at the pay-per-view in a steel cage match. So he, he wants to be able, obviously the crew's getting involved, but he, he, mo he being Mobstar wants to win back his title without any help from the outside. Therefore, he's suggesting that they have it in a, a steel cage match. And as you can see, Logan, you know, being involved in the angle on screen is basically going to, you know, nod his head and basically say, that, well, not, not say anything, but he's going to signify that he accepts it. And uh, he's probably going to have a big smile on his face as well. Because, in theory, Logan's kind of by himself, whereas Mobstar does have the crew behind him, as he is now the, the leader of the crew. Alright, other matches. Let's go for... You know what I want to do? Let's borrow some workers. Let's borrow Call the Tag. And let's borrow... Uh, where's the other one? He's injured, isn't he? 
All right, that's unfortunate because I wanted to borrow. I wanted to borrow both of them, and we now can't do it. Um, in that case, I'll borrow. Let's borrow Hank. Oh, he hasn't actually started. Okay. Um, I don't want to have the re-debut of Captain Canada yet. So what we might do instead is have maybe US Ace come up as well. Yeah, let's have US Ace and Mask Cougar come up. Just uh, two Mask Luchadors from the Developmental, and they're just going to be involved in tag team action together. And they will be taking on the LA Stars. So sort of Luchadors versus Luchadors, obviously. Want to give the LA Stars another nice victory there as well. All right, so where is he? Uh, Cougar number two, and then we need US Ace as well. Obviously, US Ace will more than likely be involved with um, Anti Canada once you know he's developed enough, I guess. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll have to script that as well. How good is he? Is that bad? Is is he? Yeah, forty three psych. I mean, that is pretty low. But I feel like he would he would kind of fit better in the stable than Blue Dragon currently does. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, non-title match. We'll make it storytelling as well because it's, it's probably going to be pretty bad. I don't think the LA Stars are going to be able to carry them that much. Um, but what I do want to have is... We want to give maybe Gary Walker a match as well. So let's have Gary Walker get a victory back. He can actually verse call the tag, I guess. Even though in theory, this is probably not going to be a very good match either. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's good for, for Calder getting a, a bit of a call up and match on TV to improve his uh, popularity as well. So that'll be good for him. And like I said, just a, a win back for Gary Walker after losing his title. Now, the next thing we need to do is... We should, we should go a tag team debut match. So let's have High Flying Hawaiian on one team, Island Boy Apollo on another team, uh, and then we can go for maybe Maddie Faith and Davis. Let's go for Davis with Hawaiian and then Maddie Faith with um, with Island Boy. So we're, uh, we're essentially going to be tying in two different storylines in what should be a pretty good match. Uh, so let's give Davis the victory. Obviously, the loser is going to have to be Island Boy. We will keep Matty strong as well. Just don't want him to lose any popularity. Not really necessary for him to lose any. Um, and it, it's going to be a good match either way. So decisive on that one. Let's get, uh, let's get Gilmore on that. Stones on that as well. And that's just a, it's a good tag team match. I like that one, to be fair. Uh, so David Stone is being used there. We need Young and Wasted. They need to take on... Let's, uh, let's go a six-man, actually, and we'll have Angry Gilmore teaming up with Young and Wasted. And this is how we can kick off storyline here as well. So let's have... Let's have Mainstream Hernandez teaming up with the Northern Lights. And I think we'll give the we'll give the victory to Taylor. Actually, we'll give it to Angry. Angry can pin and it doesn't matter. Alton, that's fine. Uh yeah, I think it still does need to be scripted. I think one of these two is lacking. Yeah, so Brett's at 58 psychology. Getting there, it's getting there. Oh, actually, Taylor's worse at 56. I, hope, eh, I mean, I don't think that's capped. I don't think it would be capped. And if it is, I'm going to cry, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it's just slow progression. You only get about four four points of psychology per year. Uh, that seems to be the, the average sort of growth. All right, so there's there's our matches, essentially. That is five matches. Let's have... I think I want to have Young and Wasted cutting a promo. Um, what did I do? I did Y then. Um, but let's just go Brett and Taylor. And they can kind of, I guess, 
let everybody know what's going to be happening. What they're, what they're trying to do. You know, the, the start of the climb, if you will. That'll go there. Should probably just put, you know, Angry Gilmore in the actual angle because it will obviously help him out greatly. Um, then want to go for Giant Brody. He's going to have an angle onto Gary uh, prior to his match. He won't be on screen, but obviously does need to be involved in the angle. And, you know, Bro Brody has been available for uh, for angles this whole time. But I just, I kind of wanted to to have Graham, or at least let Graham have his, have his moment to an extent. Anyway, let's do a cheeky little angle here for Davis and High Flying Hawaiian. A nice easy one. I won't script them, but I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried about, you know, not, not scripting them as well. So we'll just have them two together. Just, you know, talking strategy. Uh, LA Stars. Do the LA Stars need? Maybe we'll go the crew. Let's have Papa Swole and Public Enemy out there. Both on entertainment, unscripted. And I guess they can cut their angle onto the LA Stars. So have them be have them be off screen. Ah, uh, actually on screen. Maybe they come out for their for their match. And uh kind of, I guess, challenge them or re-challenge them. I, I don't know what the the proper terminology for that would be. Either way. Definitely getting involved. Um, I need two more minutes, so let's take two off this match. Simply because Angry Gilmore's in there and Hernandez, they're both already in time to climb. And then I can do one more angle, which I will... This is a tough one. Do I give it to David? Or do I... Yeah. Actually, oh, should I give it to Princeton, maybe? I'm kind of thinking maybe we go Princeton attacking. Uh, we'll go David. Um, it's not going to be about Princeton, but it will be essentially David talking about how he, you know, is being perceived as the hottest star. And uh, we can we can flow on with that into the into the next shows. I've actually not done anything for but Goldstein, so maybe I do this instead. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this uh this Aldous Forces of Darkness angle instead. So let's have Aldous, let's have Ozzy. Let's have Mutant in there as well. Let's have Zombie Boy and finally Original Sinner. Uh basically the only ones that are gonna be doing any talking is Aldous and Ozzy, so Pretty simple stuff there. And, uh, it is going to be the, uh, uh, let's have Aldous, Aldous Blackfriar, Aldous officially initiates Aussie into Forces of Darkness. He is now called Darkstein. I wonder if I can fit Ozzy in there as well. I can. Perfect. Alright, so there we go. That actually is literally the entire angle. There we go. And uh, the corruption has gone full circle. It is now finished. So that'll go pre-main event. I feel like it's just a, a good angle that's not really not really associated to anything yet but obviously that they will have their their own uh storyline which will be against who is it against it is against the money makers I, I almost forgot almost forgot all right that looks like a pretty good show actually go a uh a pre-show match here or two let's have uh disciples of darkness two actually we'll, we'll go with all of them we may as well and uh, they can take on the Rock City Stars and Charlie Corner. Let's give, uh, I kind of want to give the opposite team the victory. 
give Charlie the victory. Sinner can be the loser. I know it's it's not great having mutant lose, but it is it is literally only the pre-show, so it uh, it doesn't matter too much. I mean, I could keep him strong. Maybe I will. Uh, but we're going to be using mutant a little bit more. It's just kind of. I don't know, I guess finding the time to uh, to actually use him. All right, there we go. One pre-show, other one will go a tag match. Simple tag, and let's have the Moneymakers take on red, white, and blue. Simple, easy, and gets our guys on the card. It gives us a rematch, not a rematch, a momentum match for our former tag team champions. Right. There we go. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm not really sure which match is going to do better. So it doesn't matter. We'll leave it there. Run the show. And we start off with a 70 rated pre-show match. The Moneymakers defeating Red, White and Blue at 11.59 when Jackpot Jordan in Blue Dragon with a Make It Rain. Pretty good match. A very good match actually considering it is Red, White and Blue. And uh, yeah. Uh, well, the storyline actually lost heat already, which is pretty frustrating, but it's fine. Fine. This is only a... The thing with the uh, the tag team storylines is because I haven't aligned them with, with each other, they don't actually... Well, they advance the storylines even if they're the only competitors in the match, whereas normally they would need to verse an opposition that is also inside the storyline, if that makes sense. I kind of just, I like to do it that way because it just allows angles to be advanced, you know, in regards to the storyline as well. Whereas sometimes I guess these matches probably, or they will definitely drag it down a bit. And the second pre-show match getting us a 63 where we have Faith No More defeating Forces of Darkness in 1141. Charlie Corner pinned Original Sinner with a corner cutter, so... Big Charlie Corner getting a nice victory there against Forces of Darkness. Yeah, good stuff on the pre-show. All right, we then kick the main show off uh, with a pretty disappointing 66 rated angle. And as you can see, both Brett Kyle and Taylor Norton struggled when going off script. So note to self, I need to be scripting them because they actually do pretty well when their the angles are scripted. And they, uh, they don't get these penalties. Usually they get like 75s and above. So, need to remember to do that. Otherwise, we're going to keep getting these uh, these penalties going forward. Uh, but basically, like I said, they're, they're announcing their climb back up to the top of the tag division. And they want to see themselves going into next month. And of course, it's arguably the, the biggest month of the coalition. The big sort of war zone events. And... They want to become the number one contenders and challenge for their, what they call is their tag team gold. They are the only, I believe they're the only two-time champions in our tag division. So they have a, they have a pretty good claim of calling it their tag division, their tag belts. Alrighty, we then go into a big six-man tag, getting a 68 rating there. Angry Gilmore and Young and Wasted defeating Mainstream Hernandez. And the Northern Lights in 9.59. Angry Gilmore pinned Alton Vicious with a sky-high elbow. Yeah, just a good match. And again, sort of uh, kicking off the feud between Young and Wasted and the Northern Lights. We might do something with Hernandez and Gilmore, potentially. Probably not, though. Alrighty, we then move into a 72-rated angle where we have the debut of High Flying Hawaiian. And uh, he is going to be in tag team action with Davis, Wayne, Newton, these two guys kind of, uh, they shake hands, sort of get familiar with each other a little bit, kind of discuss game plans going into it, um, and Davis kind of asks if Highflyin knows anything about Island Boy Apollo, because Davis has obviously never versed him before. Uh, but yeah, Highflyin Hawaiian debuting his Hawaiian Warrior gimmick, getting an initial rating of great, so that's perfect. And he also gets a small boost to the microphone skill during angles as well. So happy to see a pro there. Very important that it's not a con. Like I usually say, 
As long as we don't get a con, if it's nothing, it's neutral. I'm generally happy with that. So getting a getting a pro there is very, very good. All right, we then go into their tag team match and we get a 72 rating. And coming out of it, we also get some positive chemistry as well. We have High Flying Hawaiian and Davis Wayne Newton defeating Island Boy Apollo and Matty Faith in 1222. And Davis Wayne Newton, the GOAT himself, submitted Island Boy Apollo with an STF. And as you can see, Island Boy Apollo and Matty Faith showing excellent chemistry teaming together as well. Very interesting. Anyway, we also had the debut of Island Boy and he debuted his power and paint gimmick, getting an initial rating of great. So another great gimmick there. Uh, if you remember back quite a few episodes ago, uh, we did get that extra skill point for our user and we did use it on creative. So uh, the gimmicks are going to be, obviously, as you can see, they're going to be better. And we, we're kind of seeing the, the fruits to that skill point as well. Okay, we've got uh, we've got quite a lot of pros and uh, even a con here as well. We've got uh, Power and Paint being being a very marketable gimmick will sell a lot more merchandise than usual. Uh, it also means that wins and losses have a greater impact on momentum than normal. Uh, it also gives a large boost to microphone skill during angles, a small boost to star quality during matches and angles. Uh, may receive a bonus when booked to look dominant as well and will be penalized for comedy bouts but we obviously don't use any type of comedy comedy matches or bouts or anything like that so we don't have to worry about that but that is some super good pros coming out of that man the this boost of star quality and microphone and then just overall having a, a marketable gimmick with the the face paint i guess pretty good stuff and then we have the, the positive chemistry as well. Albeit, these two really don't fit each other. But I do have a alternate picture there for Island Boy, where he, where he actually doesn't have his face paint on. So if I wanted to like turn his character heel and link up with Matty Faith, I could potentially do that because we do have that, that alternate picture or alternate render there as well. That's something to keep in the back of the mind, but obviously I kind of want the um, the Puerto Rican boys to come in, uh, being Apollo and Kid San Juan, as they're a, they're a decent tag team, and I'm sure they probably have the um, tag team specialist as well. Alrighty, we then go into a 62 rated angle from the, I guess the only wrestler that's been kind of missing for the last month and a half, and that is Giant Brody. And of course, he comes out, starts talking to get talking about Gary Walker, and says that he uh, is looking to destroy Gary Walker. He's had enough of his, you know, crap talking that he's been doing recently. He basically just wants Gary to uh, to be the next victim. I guess this is probably the easiest way of saying it without, I guess, getting too violent. But Brody wants to rip him, rip him apart. He's been left on the sidelines unable to sort of defend his own honor and then also defend Graham Gorman's honor as well even though Graham's done a you know he's done a relatively good job obviously beating Gary Walker at the pay-per-view and winning the Canadian title we then go into Gary Walker's match getting a 63 but we have Gary Walker defeating developmental talent called a tag in 1228 by pinfall with a pants pull sunset flip Pretty good match considering Calder is a jobber. You know, he's a developmental talent coming up. This is kind of similar to what you would see on AEW Dark. A lot of sort of, I guess, normal roster members versing a lot of sort of developmental talent or even, you know, enhancement talent, if you will. Uh, but yeah, Gary came out of the match looking good, getting a 70 in-ring performance there. And we also had Calder getting better at his gimmick as well as a result of that. So double win-win, I guess. And uh, hopefully Calder will get a, a nice little popularity boost as a result. All right, we then go into a 67 rated promo here from the crew uh, prior to the start of LA Stars tag team match. And basically Papa Swole and Public Enemy challenge the LA Stars one last time to a final match. They want them to put the coalition tag team titles on the line and yeah LA Stars agree to it obviously 
no talking involved from them, uh, but they nod their heads, hold the titles above their heads, and I guess in uh, in a weird way, it's uh, essentially a booked match. So the Money Makers will not be getting a title rematch just yet, as the crew will take the first defense as well. The first, I guess, I guess the first defense of the LA Stars. 67 is not too bad though. As you can see, both, or actually only Swole, enjoying having the freedom. But luckily, Public Enemy um, was neutral uh, without a script. So, perfect. We move on to their tag team match. Getting a 58 rating. So, not the best in the world. Um, but at the same time, understandable for who they're versing. Some more developmental talents that we signed last episode to OWC. And the LA Stars defeat Mars Cougar 2 and US Ace. In 11.57, when LA Star won in Mars Cougar 2 with a double stomp. And interestingly enough, we've actually found more positive chemistry, or more excellent chemistry, actually. Uh, this time between Mars Cougar and US Ace. Very interesting. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that to, to actually happen, but I guess we've uh, now got a new tag team for the developmental. That's pretty cool as well. Um, as you can see, tag team specialist, obviously the excellent chemistry there. Uh, we got a 62 for LA Star 2 and a 60 there for LA Star 1. Only a 19 for uh, US Ace and a 24 for Mars Cougar 2. It's a good match. Just a, a momentum continuer, I guess. Alrighty, we then go into a 95 rated angle. Where we have all just black. Well, we have all members of Forces of Darkness. Of course, this is the pre-main event angle as well. We have all just officially initiating Ozzy Goldstein into Forces of Darkness, and he is now called Ozzy Darkstein or Darkstein. Darks. I'll go with Darkstein. Because obviously, I say Goldstein, so Darkstein makes sense. And yeah, all this looked good, uh, but unfortunately, Goldstein. Well, Darkstein. Did not do well without a script to follow. So I guess he maybe kind of let that angle down a little bit. But even so, a 95 is really good. And probably going to help everybody in the actual angle as well. Alright. The main event. Not as good as I kind of wanted it to be. If I'm being honest. We only get an 82 there. I thought. I, I kind of hoped that it might actually be just, just that little bit better. But it's still above what we... Or I guess, I guess the minimum of what I would expect. We do have Logan Wolfsbane defeating David Stone in 1934 by submission with a Boston Crab. And of course, during the match, we also had Papa Swole run in and attack Wolfsbane. And of course, also Public Enemy attack Wolfsbane as well. So yeah, good match. 97 entering there from Logan. So I kind of feel like that should have been a little bit higher. But anyway, it's fine. And uh, only a 71 there for David Stone. But, you know, he's, uh, he's lacking a little bit in popularity. Um, not in talent, just popularity. He's also getting better at his gimmick. So that's a, another positive coming out of this. I'm going to have a look at the dirt sheet here. Obviously. Okay. Well, that would be why. So the fact that I had Papa Swole and Public Enemy run in has actually given us the, the double storyline heat penalty. The, the, yeah, the Coalition Tag Team title storyline's low heat and the lack of heat. They're the only penalties, and that probably probably tanked this match quite a bit. That's uh, that's unfortunate. It's not really a, a true ref, you know reflection of these guys and their performance. Probably like an 80, 85, 86 might have been a, a bit more of a, I guess, what I was expecting, and I guess a true reflection of, of the match itself as well. Either way, we've got the final angle of the show here. And we finish off pretty strong, getting a 100 rated angle here for Mobstar. Of course, he's the only one that's actually talking in this angle. And he basically comes out with a contract and he says he's using his rematch clause at the pay-per-view. And it is going to be in a steel cage match. Logan will have zero excuses. Upper Swole Public Enemy will not be involved in the match. And it is just you and me. In a solid steel cage match. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. And Mobstar is going to take his title back. Logan just nods his head. Has a big smile on his face like I said earlier. 
and it's just he, he's essentially I guess he would be the happy one in this scenario the fact that mobster of all people you know with the crew backing him is now choosing to have it in a steel cage and obviously mobster wants to prove that he's the best and that he's essentially the toughest in the company as well he doesn't need the backup to beat a guy like logan anyway that's that's the way that i see it and uh luckily mobster worked the crowd well using the freedom to improvise to his advantage uh, actually advanced the segment there as well, but didn't gain it any heat, which is interesting, because the uh, the storyline heat was 98. So I don't know what you need to do in order to get a 99. Potentially the match, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, we finished the show, we get an 85. Not the best in the world, but you know what? We had, uh, we had a few developmental talents on the show, and then of course, the 82 rated main event. Not the best in the world, but you know what? I'll take an 85. I don't mind that one bit. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick little sip of water here. And we will get involved with uh, progressing forward as well. Uh, you got Robbie Sanchez. He's uh, another referee... And not really needed, to be fair. And our viewing figure is 3.37 TV rating, which is massive. And that is obviously uh, another thing I forgot to mention. We did actually upgrade our broadcaster in that last episode as well, seeing as we only have 3.6 million in the bank account. As you can see, we paid the, I think it was just under 9.5 million uh, to go from medium up to big size coverage in the US. Um, and as you can see, we already have medium there for Mexico. So let's actually have a look at Mexico. We did not actually gain a point in these regions, these four, but we, I think we gained a point in uh, this region here, which is now up to 25. So hopefully with one more TV show, that'll that'll be boosted up. To, uh, to 21s for those other regions. I think... I mean, I would like to, to have the pay-per-view deal before the next pay-per-view, uh, but ultimately, I guess after this month, we will have the 22 popularity required, uh, which will be enough to get us that medium size pay-per-view deal, which is awesome. Very, very cool to be getting that pay-per-view as well. Or that pay-per-view broadcaster, I should say. Anyway, um, yeah, just want to say thank you again, guys. Thank you for all the support on the last episode. I know it was kind of a, it was a big episode for the series, and uh, like it was obviously our biggest match of the series so far, and our best match, which is nice to see. Uh, but it was indeed. I know I didn't check it, but it was our tied first best-rated show as well. Of course, we, we got a 93 for the TV show back in the day. And uh, yeah, we, we only equaled it, which I was a little bit frustrated with. But at the same time, what can you do, really? All right, so uh, yeah, Nuki Brown coming in to OWC, which is really good because he's actually, he's pretty talented. I mean, he's a guy that I might actually bring up quite often to... To work with um some of the some of the main roster guys, but there is Brody back now as well, and uh, Jerome Huey, a guy we were kind of looking at potentially bringing in as well, now being signed up by XWA. Probably, I mean, we probably should sign that guy. To be fair, he is good, but he he just one of his you know primary skills is hardcore. You know the forty eight. He's got forty eight in technical and in hardcore as well. And, yeah, I don't know. When, when you look at that, we just we don't use hardcore, like zero hardcore in our company. It's just, I don't know, it's pretty pointless. And I, I don't know how good he actually, he actually will be as a result of that. And having, you know, most of his other primary skills pretty low, apart from technical, of course. But, yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting one. Tell you one thing I really do like is the fact that they they blended the technical ability 
from three stats back in 2016 into one technical ability in 2020. Should have probably mentioned that in my first impressions. I don't, I don't think I did. I mean, looking back on that first impressions video um, during the beta as well, it's pretty funny looking back and how much they actually changed the game. Even just the, you know, the biggest, the biggest thing was just the fact that everybody was just hating on the, the way, the, like the AI of the, the AI, the, the UI, I guess, user interface, the, the graphics of the, the backgrounds and stuff. And they changed it to this and I'm still using the default. and I cannot fault it at all. I wouldn't change the default for any skin. So they, they really did a good job. Anyway, we've got Deborah Young. Now, Deborah is 33 years old. Very, very talented. And we've been talking about a women's division. Got pretty good popularity as well. They're, they're not too, that's not too bad. Really not. I think we're, we're going in. Um, she is American, so a little bit unfortunate. Would have been nice to to get a Canadian coming in, but let's give her a, give her a six year contract. Uh, we'll try and get things a little bit lower as well. Um, she's going to want 17,200. Really not too expensive. Um, but the, the bonus might be the, yeah, the bonus is going to be the, the real downside. All right. So let's try 10%. We actually win the, uh, the offer there. Interesting. Also, Joss Thompson, but uh, I don't really think he's all that necessary, to be honest. He's very, very good, but he's also 42 years old. Don't know if he's in time decline yet. That's strange, but yeah, I don't think we need him. And of course, he's uh, one half of a tag team as well, apparently, with uh. Well, he's currently holding the, the title belt there, the tag team titles. Anyway, let's uh let's get into the next show and we'll uh we'll see what happens after this one. Uh let me also rename Aussie Darkstein as well. Once again, we'll do some more meddling between Davis and Mighty Kavanaugh. Uh oh, he's not here. Of course he's not. Should have known. Yep. All right. We're going to go to Hamilton for this show. You know, we like to, to go down the list for our shows there. Now, the real question is, what are we going to do for this main event? Because, yeah, I really don't know what I'm going to do. One thing I do, or I would like to do, is to maybe have... High Flying Hawaiian versus Mobstar in the main event. So we'll do that. I like it. Not really sort of storyline associated with anyone, but let's um let's see how it does. We'll see how it does. Gives gives Mobstar a bit of momentum back as well. And uh we might have Logan come to ringside and make a distraction or something like that. Um yeah, so let's do that. Let's have a distraction onto Mobstar by Logan. And um, what I might do is have a pre-main event angle between, well, from Logan cutting a promo onto uh, Mobstar. Uh, he'll, he'll be off screen, so it'll be backstage. But uh, it's kind of going to be Logan, I guess, accepting the... the you know, title rematch. And then of course he'll say, you know, he's gonna he's gonna come to ringside, basically. Alrighty, what else are we doing? Let's uh let's go a singles match between Taylor Norton and Riddick Riddick Jordan there. Obviously, you have to give my boy Taylor the victory there. I'm a big, I'm a big fan. I know a lot of you guys are as well, of Young and Wasted Man. There, they really could be, you know, big future stars for us, indeed. 
Uh, the next match, I know I said Graham Gorman wasn't going to be involved, but you know what? Let's let's go with Kilogram, of course. Brody's finally back. Uh, and let's have him take on... I guess take on Gary and a partner of Gary's choosing, perhaps. Don't really know who we would uh, put with him. Or who would even... Maybe Princeton or Jack Pride. Let's go Jack Pride. That actually works pretty well. Gets, uh, gets Jack Pride onto the card as well. And we'll have Brody defeat Jack Pride. Nice and easy. All right. Uh, needs to be scripted, obviously. I'm kind of blanking out for a second there. Uh, so let me also go back and change the name for Aussie because we're going to have Aussie and Aldous in a match together now. So where are we? Aussie. Oh, oh, oh. Rost is getting pretty big now. Pretty big indeed. Alrighty. So how do we change his name? All right, there we go. Aussie Darkstein. Uh, I mean, yeah, it can be an alter ego. Let's go. I mean, we'll keep it at 75% for the uh, AI. It, it literally doesn't matter because he, he's more or less going to be with us forever. So, yeah. All right. Happy, happy with that. Aussie Darkstein. And now let's have a match. Let's have... I think I will actually add them as a proper tag team as well. So let's have Disciples of Darkness 6. Uh, so add new team. Paste that there. Disciples of Darkness 6. And it's going to be Aldous and Aussie Darkstein. Perfect. All right. Add team. That's quite a tag team, man. That really is. Alrighty, so they will be taking on the Rock City Stars. Obviously trying to get a, a little bit of revenge from last week on the pre-show. Where their boys did fall to Faith No More. Albeit Charlie Corner was involved and got the pinfall, but that doesn't matter too much. Alright. Uh, it is going to be decisive... There's going to be no outside interference for this one. Uh, but who's their opponent? So it is going to be the Money Makers. Kind of wondering, do I... Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe I have an angle before or after. I might go with an angle after by the Money Makers and an angle before just with all this and Aussie. I think that's probably the, the best way of going about that. So let me do that real quick. Let's have Jackpot and Stevie P. They're going to cut onto Aldous and Aussie. Uh, they'll be they'll be on screen. Uh, no, they'll be off screen. Because I guess the the money makers can be backstage or whatever. It really doesn't matter because they're they're not going to be coming out to ringside. Actually, they probably would come out to ringside. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Let's just have them off screen because they're, they're going to have their own TV time anyway. Um, both with the match and with their angle as well. All right. So there's their angle. Uh, their angle is not going to be anything you know, specific, whereas the moneymakers are going to sort of challenge them to a match, if, if that makes sense. Uh, but it will all advance the same storyline as well. All right, that looks good. Uh, I think I want to have a... Do, I get, do we go with Gary Walker and uh, Primetime Jack Pride, maybe? Or do I just go... Let's, let's just go Gary Walker and uh, Giant Brody. And that'll be pre-match, but it, it will be in the ring. So this one actually will be in the ring and kind of makes sense. Because Gary's going to be talking a, a little bit more smack towards Giant Brody. Not going to be talking smack about um, Graham Gorman, though, which will be interesting. Anyway, uh, let's keep going. What else do we need? Uh, you know what? I think I want to give a big, big victory to the LA Stars. Either, either, actually, maybe do I go the crew? I think I'm going to go the crew as well. Um, all right, so Kid San Juan 
and Island Boy. The Puerto Rican boys, welcome to the company. Uh, but they are going to be losing, so it's a double loss there for Island Boy Apollo. And it kind of pains me to do this, but the crew is going to beat the Puerto Rican boys. Now, their, their popularity is relatively the same. Um, but obviously, I want Papa Swole to get the victory, because Public Enemy doesn't have too much of an upside there either. Uh, let's have Kid San Juan being the loser as well, actually. I feel like that, that's kind of important. So there's those two, um, I guess we'll have the LA Stars cut a promo onto them prior to their match. Actually, maybe they can have a sit-down interview as well with, uh, with Jurian. I know we've kind of done this quite a few times, but Chaka Grace Harper can, can appear on a show for once. I should probably just send her down to OWC. Uh, but let's go LA Star 1, LA Star 2. Just like that. He'll be rated on uh he'll be rated on microphone and they'll be rated on entertainment. And they'll both get some success there as well. Script all three of them, because I think that was the problem last time that we had as well. So there we go. That'll advance their storyline. And uh we've got well, we've got time for one more angle. I'm not really too sure what I want to do. You know what I will do? Let's um let's have High Flying Hawaiian cut an angle onto Island Boy Apollo as well. Uh so we'll give him seven minutes to do his thing, and the new boy's storyline will be advanced. And that can go that can go second. But I think I'd like to start off with the uh the interview angle from uh Jurian. Alright, that looks pretty good. Uh let's go pre-show. Uh, we might even, let's borrow a few more workers as well, uh, for the pre-show. Let's borrow, Rodney Rush can come back up. Zach Powerson can come back up. We might, um, we might chuck him back into his stable. Uh, Curtis Gautier, yeah, he definitely needs to, to improve a little bit. What about Garland? Yeah, we'll bring Garland up as well. All right. So on the pre-show, let's have, I think I want to have maybe Faith No More. I guess maybe just Charlie Corner and Maddie Faith. Obviously, Maddie's is not really being used on this show, um, but him and he will be involved in the next show with, uh, with Davis in some sort of capacity. Anyway, there we go. Give those guys 12 minutes. I think we'll do, we'll do three pre-show matches here. We'll try to anyway. Um, Robinson can just be the, uh, the road agent for all three of them. Uh, you know what? Because he's in the match, I'm going to protect Matty Faith as well. Just, you know, I don't want anything to happen to him. So we'll, uh, we'll protect any sort of main stars that we're going to, like, main event level stars, I guess. Let's go a six-man... Tag here. Let's go the LA Stars and they can team up with Shooting Star Perez, who is uh, another new signing that we signed actually to the to the main roster because he refused to actually go down. And uh they can take on Zach Powerson, Cooper Christie, and Jack Jackson on the pre-show. Pretty good match to be fair. And uh let's give let's give Shooting Star Perez the win. And Zach can get a loss there as well. Alright. It's a good pre-show match there as well. Uh, was there anyone else I brought up? I think there, there was somebody else, but I've kind of forgotten who it was. Uh, let me see if I can find their name real quick. Was there anyone else? No. Looks like I used everybody, I think. Yeah. Anyway, let's go David Stone and Chip Martin, and they can take on the team of Spencer Edmund and Yuta Sono. If I can click on his name properly, see if there's any uh, positive chemistry between these guys. Would be quite nice. David Stone to get the victory, as you would expect. Obviously, needs to be scripted due to 
Chip Martin's involvement. Hopefully he will get up to a decent level though. Quite happy with that. So make that... Uh... Actually, you know what? You more can do that one. Probably... Actually, you know what? I think that one's actually going to be the best match of the three. Though I, I don't really know. Anyway, let's, uh, let's run the show. We've got a fully booked show. Three pre-show pre matches there as well. And we kick things off with a 59 rated tag team pre-show match. Charlie Corner and Matty Faith defeating Curtis Gautier and Rodney Rush in 11.50. When Charlie pinned Curtis with a corner cutter. Obviously, Matty Faith head and shoulders above everybody else. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, Gautier and Rush don't work well as a team together. Which is unfortunate, but good to see the, the negative chemistry. We, we at least know about it now. So that's good. All right, we then go into a 68-rated six-man tag on the pre-show with Shooting Star Perez and the LA Stars defeating the Frat Pack in 12-11 when Shooting Star Perez pinned Zach Powerson with a Shooting Star Press. Yeah, I mean, it's a good match. It's actually a pretty good match. Uh, unfortunately, Shooting Star Perez seemed off his game, uh, but he is still pretty young, so he, he still needs to be or become uh, a little bit more consistent, I think. And our final pre-show match getting us a 64 rating here where we have David Stone and Chip Martin defeating Spencer Edmund and Uterus Sono. 12-29 when David Stone in Uterus Sono with a stone cutter. And obviously Chip being the, the weak link in this match as well. Really need to find something maybe for, for Spencer to do. I feel like he could uh, potentially join a stable. But I just don't know which stable he could join. So there we go. All right, we then go into a 56-rated interview angle opening the show. We have our sort of main announcer and interviewer. I guess he's kind of a, a Tony Schiavone to AEW. You know, obviously, Tony, it, you know, he does the interview or predominantly does the sort of in-ring contract signings, interviews, stuff like that. You know, he did with uh, Britt Baker as well back in the day. So Jurian's going to kind of be our Tony. And uh, this angle, he is obviously interviewing the LA Stars, kind of talking about their title victory at the pay-per-view and, of course, the uh, subsequent challenge from the crew. And they both said, you know, last week we nodded our heads in agreement with the crew accepting the tag team title match. And uh, we held our belts proudly above our heads where they belong, you know, in our hands. And he says they're they're kind of welcoming any and all sort of challenges that, that come their way, for lack of a better term, whether it's Young and Wasted, the former champs, the moneymakers, or indeed our, you know, familiar foe in the crew. Yeah, 56 is pretty bad for an angle, but you know what? It's not as bad as it has been, so we'll, uh, we'll take it. All right, we then go into another angle, this one getting a 70 rating, but we have High Flying Hawaiian cutting a promo onto his pay-per-view opponent, Island Boy Apollo, and says that the uh, the two new boys have officially been put into a match together, one-on-one -on -one at the pay-per-view, and obviously Island Supremacy is up for grabs, and uh, Hawaii versus Puerto Rico, the fans are going to obviously be split from where they're from. And High Flying Hawaiian did a masterful job of improvising interactions with the crowd. So very good stuff there from Hawaiian. I don't know, what, what should I call him? Should I call him High Flying or should I call him Hawaiian? I, High Flying is probably the, the better way or the better name to, short name to call him. Anyway, 70 is pretty good from him. And then we go straight into tag team action, getting a 69 rated match here. Where we have the crew defeating the debuting Puerto Rican boys. Obviously, Kid San Juan out there. Um, and Island Boys already had a match, but... Debuting as a tag team in 11.32 when Papa Swall pinned Kid San Juan with the pounce. So good stuff there. Uh, we got Kid San Juan debuting his Puerto Rican Patriot gimmick. Even though I think he's American, which is pretty funny, but I would assume that he's maybe, you know, Puerto Rican descendancy or something like that. Anyway, initial rating of very good for his gimmick. So, you know, pleased, pleased. However, I am not pleased with the con. 
gives a large penalty to Charisma during matches and angles. Yeah, that, that, that's terrible. That's, that's really bad. Considering how good Island Boy's uh, pros were for his gimmick, that one's pretty terrible. Anyway, moving on to a 97 rated angle this time. Uh, and luckily, we have both of them improvising well throughout the segment there. Uh, but it is the sort of official coming together of Aldous and Aussie Darkstein. And they are now officially disciples, disciples of darkness. As uh, the sort of Forces of Darkness official team name being given to, uh, to Darkstein there. Obviously, he doesn't have any other sort of iterations as he's kind of the, the golden boy, if you will, of Aldous Blackfriar. Very good stuff, though. 97 is very solid. We then go into an 83 rated tag team match here as well, where we have Disciples of Darkness defeating the Rock City Stars in 1229 when Ozzy Darkstein, I was about to call him Goldstein, Ozzy Darkstein pinned Rock and Ryan Turner with a golden shower. I guess it would be maybe a darkness, dark shower, darkness shower, I don't know. We'll keep it as the golden shower because it is literally a golden shower. Anyway, um, yeah, just a really solid 83 rated match. I mean, that, that match there is higher than our pay-per-view, uh, our main event match on the last TV show. So it goes to show how good that actually is. Alrighty, we then go into a 90 rated angle, which is very, very surprising to be fair. And we have the Moneymakers come out and cut an angle onto Aldous Blackfriar and Aussie Darkstein. And yeah, Jackpot and Stevie P doing really well, um, improvising well. Stevie using the crowd well to improvise. Just good stuff and a, a, solid, a solid 90 rated angle there, which I wouldn't really expect from the Moneymakers. Especially after losing their titles, which I find strange. Alright, we then go into a singles match where we get a 73 rating and we have Taylor Norton defeating Riddick Jordan in 11.34 by pinfall with a tumbleweed splash. And interesting to see, but yeah, Taylor and Riddick have great chemistry together and it showed in their performance. Solid stuff. But a 73 for Taylor, 47 there for Riddick. And uh, yeah, just a, a solid match for uh, some storyline heat and we find the positive chemistry as well. Alrighty, we then go into a 92 rated angle. This one coming from Gary Walker and he is cutting another promo where he is essentially making fun of Giant Brody and the fact that he no longer, well, in theory, he can no longer challenge for the Canadian title as his current tag team partner, Graham Gorman, is the champion. And then, you know, Brody, Brody's obviously in the ring. They're getting ready to, to verse each other in tag team action. Brody, you know, he's looking pretty threatening during this angle as well. Make no mistake about it. Brody wants to get his hands around the, the neck of Gary Walker and uh, choke slam him down to the mat. And as you can see, Gary working the crowd well. Just uh, doing typical heel things. You know, just really getting under the skin of giant Brody. I guess in a, in a weird way, he's kind of playing mind games as well. The tag team match getting us a 75 there as well. But we do have Kilogram defeating Gary Walker and Primetime Jack Pride in 12-12 when Giant Brody in Jack Pride with a single-handed choke slam. Uh, but I guess the, the story for this match would be whenever, you know, Gary was in the match, if Graham Gorman tagged out to Giant Brody, then Gary Walker would immediately run over to Jack Pride and essentially tag him in uh, just so Gary didn't have to face Giant Brody during the match. Kind of being a bit of a coward, as you would expect. You know, he's talking a lot of nonsense, a lot of crap, you know, talking, talking or letting his mouth run a little bit wild. And then obviously Brody wants to absolutely smash him and then... You know, Gary being a, a, a true weaselly sort of small heel. Just running away. Running away from his problems. And uh, I guess making Brody even more frustrated and furious at Gary Walker. Alrighty, we then go into an 87. So this one's a little bit lower. As you can see, we, uh, we lost heat 
from the storyline. Unfortunate, uh, where we have Logan Wolfsbane coming out to the ring uh, prior to Mobstar's match. Basically saying that he accepts the Steel Cage match and he cannot wait to prove to the world back his, uh, back his first victory up and show exactly why he is the current unified world champion. He wants to, you know, prove that he is by far the best. He's the most popular. The fans absolutely love the guy. The, the whole sort of redemption storyline. Um, also, you know, kicking things off, having the back of his cousin James Diaz. Back when, uh, you know, Diaz's neck was broken by forces of darkness. And just, you know, the fans seeing his progression back in the day, never winning that world title, and then him coming full circle uh, to eventually win the title would have been you know, quite a, a decent long-term storyline for the fans to actually see. So, yeah, good stuff there. Logan was uh, very poor in improvising or trying to improvise dialogue, so failed without a script there, but you know what? It is it is what it is. It's fine. All right, the main event does very, very well. This is kind of what I expected from the uh, the last main event. But um, I booked that a little bit... Well, I booked it wrong, basically, by having involvement. I sh if I had just done one of them, so if I had just done Public Enemy to get involved in that match in the last TV show, it wouldn't have got those storyline penalties, and it potentially would have rated as good as this one. So we get a 92 for the second TV show's main event here. And we do indeed have the former world champion, Mobstar, Defeating new boy High Flying Hawaiian in 1943 uh, by pinfall with a flattener DDT. And then during the match, we also had Logan Will Spain distract Mobstar being at ringside. Um, I'm assuming this uh, the storyline would have been advanced. Yeah. So this one would have actually had a hot storyline with it. No, it, it didn't. It didn't actually have a hot story. Actually, maybe it did. It might be up here somewhere. No, you know what? I don't think it did. Very strange. Very strange indeed. Anyway, but a solid 92 there from Mobstar and a pretty decent 74 as well from High Flying Hawaiian. Hopefully he'll be getting a little popularity because you know, he's now got two wins. Well, he's got one win, two promos, and a, a 92 rated loss under his belt as well in the space of two weeks as well. So... You can kind of tell where I'm going with High Flying Hawaiian. Anyway, let's finish the show. That's much better. We get a 91 rated show. Six points higher than the uh, the last TV show as well, which is nice. And we also get the popularity increase in Ontario. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Hopefully we're up to maybe 86 popularity. Uh, give us a, a little bit of wiggle room if we, you know, don't put on a, a show... 86 or 85 you know quality because if we had done that first tv show and only got an 84 we potentially would have dropped back down to 84 popularity in ontario anyway um all right we got deborah young the contract renegotiations so we'll go back in here it's still actually not getting too expensive you know i'm actually like it's not it's not bad it's really not bad might actually up this to seven years because the, the thing with the women is they're only or they're probably only going to be in 12 minute matches at a maximum anyway and they're likely not going to main event for for a long time so having the women be you know elder and be in time decline it's really not going to affect the the matches too much apart from you know, the obvious penalties. So let me chuck that up to seven. Uh, let's try 19,000. Um, so she's saying no to that, but what about 20%? Yes. Okay. So 19,000, seven years, which will take her to 40 years old, which isn't terrible. Anyway, we've got our cowboy buck Winchester here as well. He's a, a loner, a smoker, and a drinker. So we probably don't want him. He's also got 30 stamina. 30. I almost feel sorry for him. How is he putting on any type of matches? 
He got a 90 rated match. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. I mean, he's actually been caught in some uh, backstage trouble there back in April. That uh, he and Elmo Benson don't like each other. Pretty interesting. Who's this? PN Militech. Militech. Itch, tick? I don't know. Damn. Uh, this guy looks pretty good. Uh, are they re-signing him? Yes, they are. I don't like his name. PN. Like... Um, I feel like I pretty much have to sign him, don't I? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. We'll uh, we'll go fifteen thousand. Ten years. I mean, I'll probably put him in developmental. To be honest, I don't really think he deserves anything better than that at this point. Class Clown, it's not the, the worst sort of um, personality you could have either, so that's okay. Alright, we're signing um, Dwayne Appleseed as well. I like this guy. I, I like his picture, and he's also 6'2", 244 pounds. His finisher is the Killer Thrust Kick. Pretty decent. If you look at his stats, I mean, entertainment stats are incredible. Obviously low, low psychology because he's only 22 years old. He's very young. Uh, but the top row is looking pretty good as well. 50 technical, 55 brawling, 40 flashiness in there as well. 80 stamina. Another one for the developmental boys. All right. The, uh, the dev is looking pretty well fleshed out now as well. All righty, there we go. Dwayne Appleseed. I, I like his name better. Okay, so Captain Canada has been requested to be brought onto the main roster. Uh, I, know, I wanted him down there for a little while. I wonder if that's going to give him sort of morale issues. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll suss that out later. I want, it, I want him to stay down there because he has really good basics and I want him to, to sort of rub off on people. He's also the TV champion as well. But we got a 3.59 TV rating, almost hitting 2.7 million viewers, which is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway. All right, what did CWA do? Only an 87, so we actually beat them. Their, their main event was trash. Only a 79. Obviously, they also had a 94 in the pre-main event, or the, the semi-main event. But uh, it, it doesn't matter too much, does it? I mean, Mikey Lau. I need to sign Mikey Lau. I know he's old. Oh, we're not going to be able to sign him. He's going to be 40 years old by the time we get to sign him, man. So unfortunate. What about these guys? I mean, Shooter Sean looks pretty good, but he's also got a year and eight months left. What about these girls? What about Claire Winters? Uh, I think her, her contract only just recently came up, didn't it? Uh, oh, Alina America. Three months in one week. Okay, we'll probably go in for her. She's very good. Very good star quality. Very good on the microphone. And very good in the ring. 35 years old though, the, the women seemed, like the women I'm familiar with, they all seem to be quite old. I know we're you know, four and a half years into the game, and obviously I kind of kn knew them from 2016, um, which is interesting. Uh, what about these two? I mean, they're probably uh, a year and three weeks. That's actually not too bad for Brooke. And I mean, Brooke would be the, the biggest female steal that we could get. Amber Allen... Okay. Two months, three weeks. So just under three months. And we could steal away Amber Allen. 
it would be very very handy to to build our women's division around 36 as well though so yeah interesting nadia snow seven months and what about sona shah three years one month all right they they locked the uh the youngster down for for quite some time anyway i'm sure there's there's other really good women out there as well uh that you know are probably not even signed anywhere to be honest i mean realistically i could probably just go to five star and essentially sign you know some of their best workers as well so yeah anyway size we are indeed up to 86 popularity in ontario that is insane anyway what about mexico oh yes we're up to 21 one more point of popularity so it, it will probably come next episode i'm assuming unless we pull off a miracle um after this show but uh let's get into the final tv show already at an hour and 20 minutes uh, actually, I should probably have double-checked Deborah Young's contract. I know we, we had the second best offer there. <sighs> I really I really hate that. The, the, the whole processing thing on TEW really needs to be fixed. All right, so we're getting in PN Militich. Going down to... Oh, okay, so they did actually put in another offer. Luckily, luckily I'm seeing that. Uh, what about this one? All right, that's not being seriously considered, so we'll, we'll probably win him, as you would expect anyway. But back into Deborah. What have we got? So they're going four years at that price, so we're probably going to have to go up to maybe 25000 yeah, I'm guessing 25k is probably going to be it, so. We'll go up by 1,000s uh, until we get the uh, the better of the two offers, to be honest, because I don't really want to compete. I would I would like to just, you know, flat out sign her. Because she, she would be a really good starting point. Twenty five, don't be more expensive. Oh, man. Brutal. Brutal, man. All right, so 26. All right, at least it's 26. Nothing <laughs> nothing more than 26. All right, what else have we got? Gilbert Roberts, another dojo graduate for SWF. Also looking pretty damn good, uh, but he's a bully, so we, we don't want that personality type. Uh, we also have the Crippler, who is now 51 years old, uh, but he is retired. We don't need him. He passes on knowledge, but you know what? There's no point. How how expensive would he be as well? Yeah. We could get him for 500 per appearance, but there's there's that's literally no point. We don't need any more road agents. We don't need any more sort of managers. It's just yeah, there's no reason. Anyway, let's get into the last show. Wanna wanna do some booking? Wanna also have a sip of water here? A voice man it does take a little bit of a beating doing these long episodes. Alrighty, so here's our Dwayne Appleseed. Obviously going down to OWC as well. And uh we're still waiting. We are still waiting for Deborah. I think we uh I think we've won it, so that's really good to see. And uh basically that means we need to start a women's division in the next like twenty five days or so. So I guess next episode we'll we'll probably do some I guess maybe unemployed signings and some younger women signings as well. See, the, the thing is, I can't really, well, I, I can put the women down in developmental. But I do need a couple of women on the main roster. And what I could do is bring the developmental women, I can borrow them up literally every week. And at the, at the minimum, just have them in pre-show matches. Uh, but then occasionally we'll, we'll put them on TV because, you know, in theory, I want them to gain some popularity as well for when they eventually do come up when they're good enough uh, to be the, the proper main roster members. That's kind of my game plan with it. So we're, we're going to try and sign 
some younger workers, probably some uh, some newly generated workers as well, some dojo graduates and stuff like that. Who's this? Joella Leon. As you can see, very, very good talent. Joella Leon. I'm going to write that down. Uh, Joella Leon. She looks really cool. I'm assuming that she is actually a, a worker that is set to debut and not a, a newly... Oh, there we go. Not a newly generated worker. But here is the official start. The official start to our women's division. Obviously, it's only one member, but we only have 20 days to, to get a few more women in as well. All right, we've got Robin DeLay. Robin DeLay. Could get him in. He's a, another worker similar to Stone, David Stone. His eyes, father is Dan DeLay. Obviously a former three-time CGC world champion. So having him in our company would, uh, I guess, follow suit with the whole... I guess we are the... You can kind of see CWA being the former North of the Border Pro Wrestling. I know they both merged, but let's pretend that um, we're kind of the outspoken former CGC built in that sort of mold to be a, a true competitor to the, the real top dog of Canadian wrestling. I mean, getting this guy in, he's a legacy talent. And I mean, him and him and David Stone could put on some real good matches as well. So. Once again, another signing. The roster is massive at this point. We might even have to go up to like two and a half hour TV shows just to sort of accommodate everybody, which is pretty crazy. But, you know, it's going to be longer episodes, more booking for me to do as well. But you know what? It, it makes sense to do. So I think I'm, I'm pretty happy to do it. Uh, so you're going to want 16,600, which is, that's not too bad. 27 years old, very, very good brawling on him. Very good. Good basics, good psychology as well. So he's he's also a ready-made sort of upper mid-card talent, uh, similar to David Stone. But you know what? For him, I might actually leave him in the mid-card a little bit longer. I feel like he would make a, a very, very decent Canadian champion uh, with that sort of legacy. We could maybe even bring in um, Dandelay as well, his father, but maybe be a road agent. Could be, could be a pretty... Not, a road, well, both a road agent and his manager as well. Uh, so, yeah, he's got a better offer. So what we'll need to do is go 10% minimum. So we'll do that. Because uh, I just want to see what, what he's actually going to do. Uh, we also officially now have Hank Whitman in the company. I'm a big fan of Hank Whitman. Just need his psychology to get up to maybe 66, 65 around that area. And uh, he himself is going to be a, a very decent talent as well. All right, so Deborah is in the company. And uh, we'll see what happens with Robin DeLay as well. Because I would like to get him in as well. Alrighty, let's get into the last show. Alrighty, what have we got? Alright, we can actually do, do some meddling here for Kavanaugh and Davis. Still no effect. They still hate each other, which is hilarious. Anyway, we're going to go to Mississauga for tonight's show. And I would like to try and get, you know, the the 16,000. Anyway, Charlie Corner is going to be taking on Davis, not in the main event. Obviously, we need to try and improve Davis's popularity back up a little bit. He did lose some popularity way back then. Um, good to see it's up to 84, so it's already gained a, a little bit this month. Uh, with that win in that tag team match. So I'm happy with that. Uh, we're going to have Davis getting the win. I might even chuck Matty Faith onto commentary. Uh, let's have... Can it be called? I don't... Uh, can Charlie call yet? I think he's close, isn't he? 61. You know what? He might be able to call a match. Let's risk it. I want to see what happens. There we go. All right. I didn't put uh, Maddie on commentary. Um, oh, I have to go by roll. 
just to you know to change it up a little bit and of course that'll that'll advance the storyline even though it'll probably it'll probably ruin the match uh but the main event what are we doing the main event very good question I know what we're doing. We're doing Aldous Blackfriar taking on Jackpot Jordan. That is a that is a big match. This could be a very highly rated match as well, now that I think about it. Because it, it's probably going to have a hot storyline associated with it as well. And just with how good he is, obviously, being Aldous. Uh, but Jackpot's really good. Just not over enough. That's kind of his only problem. He's literally like one of the best workers we have, without a shadow of a doubt. A little bit worried that his stamina dropped one point. That could be something we have to worry about. Anyway, it's going to be a great match either way uh, as our main event. I'm expecting it to potentially get a, an 88 or close close to an 85 to maybe a 90, somewhere, somewhere in that region, hopefully. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't know, actually. Let's go for David Stone. Let's do it. Let's go a, let's go a, a six man. And let's have Angry, David, and Chip. And they can take on Princeton with uh, a team of somebody else. I don't know. Uh, so let's go. Who, who are some heels we have? Maybe we'll just go Los Hermanos with him. Yeah, I mean, it kind of works. Princeton Price, not going to have, you know, many friends around the company, if you will. And we'll just give David the victory. The loser can obviously be Ray Cavallero. Simple as that. Storytelling as well. And there we go. All right, good storytelling match there, actually. All right, up next, we want to have a... I want to have the Northern Lights beat somebody, but we don't really have anyone that I, I want them to actually beat. Maybe apart from Disciples of Darkness. I guess maybe they could also verse the Puerto Rican boys and win. And I'm kind of jobbing the Puerto Rican boys out, which um wasn't really my thought process when I brought them in. Uh, so let's give Riddick the win here. It's going to have to be called, obviously. It will be decisive. Again, nothing we can do about that. Um, you know what I might also do for this show? Uh, let's give Mutant a five-minute squash match as well. It's only five minutes, or so it's going to be seven minutes, I guess. Um, who can he squash? Let's just bring up someone from uh, Developmental. Should probably give it to Brody. But maybe I can just do that next episode for the, the Go Home show to, to get him warmed up for his uh, his match against Gary. So, yeah, let's let's borrow. Uh, who do we want to borrow? Maybe... Oh, we can't actually borrow. I was going to go Dwayne Appleseed. Uh, I mean, Nuki Brown. But he, he doesn't actually need to be in a match against... What's his name? So that wouldn't really make sense. Garland Dillon. Let's go Garland. Actually, Garland doesn't have very good selling. Does anybody have relatively good selling here? I don't want it to be Hank either. Anybody have good selling? Likely they're all going to have bad selling because they're all pretty terrible. But, um, I mean, 51 there for Cougar. Uh, PN's not actually here yet, but PN would make a good jobber. What about Reggie? 55 for Reggie. I don't really want Reggie to be a, a jobber, though. Because he, he's a big boy, and I d would actually like to use him in the future. Robin would be the, the smartest one. Let's just bring Robin, Robin Newman back up. He's got really good selling, so he can take on Mutant. And we'll book it to be a, a proper squash match as well. Uh, so where is he? Robin. Robin. Alright, so five minutes. Quincy. Go angry. Mutant to win. Mutant to dominate. Script and decisive. 
we can actually call it. I didn't realize that... I probably shouldn't have sent Robin Newman down there. He has 71 psychology. Um, which is funny. I really should have made him and Bowden Snooper tag team. Because they could have been our resident jobber tag team. Maybe I will do that and bring them back up. Uh, either way, let's, let's actually call this one. That's a nice easy squash match there. And then I guess to finish us off. Let's maybe have... I, I kind of need to have maybe Logan take on somebody. Let's have Logan versus... Maybe Spencer? Yeah, we'll, we'll go Spencer. Spencer needs to get involved in the Canadian title storyline at some stage as well. I think that's kind of the, the best place for him to be. Alrighty. Hopefully this match isn't going to beat the main event. Because that would suck, but... It is possible. It is def definitely possible. Alrighty, so angles. Let's go for Aldous. Uh, and he can cut his angle onto Jackpot prior to the match. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do both. We'll do, we'll do a back and forth. We'll do a back and forth. I like that. Uh, a nice little back and forth pre-main event angle there. Let's go, I mean, I can't, the thing is I can't give the Northern Lights an angle because they're not over enough. The fans, will, you know, will be, will be overusing them. I mean, we just have to give them more victories, I guess. I mean, I guess in theory, I could maybe go for Young and Wasted. So we'll go for Brett and Taylor. This time we will actually script them. Give them some success there as well. That to Gilmore. And continue the climb. That'll go before the Northern Lights match. I then want to have Matty Faith in an angle with Charlie Corner. Charlie, I mean, do I... Uh, I probably... I probably don't have Charlie saying anything, uh, but we're going to have Davis off screen in this one as well. So we'll go some success there. Davis off screen. And that looks like a pretty good angle as well. And I mean, I'm hoping just by putting Charlie in the angle to appear, he might actually gain a little bit of popularity as a, as a result. I feel like that kind of happened before. Uh, I'm not sure if it was him being involved in the angles or if it was him actually being his manager. Either or doesn't matter too much. Can, uh, can Chip speak? He can. He can speak, but you know what? Let's just go with David. And let's have him cut a promo onto Princeton. I like that better. And it's it, it just going to, you know, continue the storyline. And uh, essentially just, you know, set things up a little bit easier. Or I guess shows us that it is being set up a little bit easier as well. And then I guess finally we can uh, potentially lower a minute maybe off this one as well. And we'll get a nice little Logan Wolfsbane angle again. Try and, I guess, actually, or should we just go, let's go, let's go Mobstar instead actually for this one. So kind of like a back and forth. Uh, he'll be joined by Papa Swole and Public Enemy. However, they won't be speaking. And we'll have Logan be off screen as well. Bit of success there. Eight minutes. Done and dusted. That is the final show. Just need to do some pre-show stuff. Might bring up a couple more sort of uh, developmental talents as well. That is our unified world title storyline. Nice. All right. Let's borrow some more people. Let's borrow... Borrow Captain Canada. I want to give him a victory, to be fair. Let's borrow Hank Whitman as well. And then finally... Maybe Nuki Brown as well. So they're, they're three pretty good guys. And you know what? We might actually just have a, like a proper developmental match. So they can take on maybe Cougar. Actually, let's go... 
Didn't I already borrow? No, I didn't borrow Garland. So we'll borrow Garland, Portland, and Martin. Alrighty, so they'll be one of our pre-show matches. So let's have Portland Bartlett and where is he? Martin Parent team up with Garland Dillon to take on Captain Canada. Where is he? Hank Whitman and Nuke Brown. Should be a, a relatively good pre-show match. Obviously, this side of the of the teams is pretty pretty decent, really. Uh, let's give Captain Canada the win. We'll say former coalition talent back in the day. I like it. All right. The next pre-show, let's just go another six-man. Let's have Brody, Graham Gorman, and High Flying Hawaiian taking on... Uh, where is he? Gary Walker, and we'll chuck in the Puerto Rican boys in there as well. Could have, could have been on TV show this match, but it, it, I don't know. It kind of works a little bit better actually being on the uh, the pre-show. The main show. It should have been the main show. Uh, I think we can call as well. Yeah, definitely. Alright, that looks good. So that'll be our pre-show main event, I guess. Let's run the final TV show of the episode. Starting off with a 43 rated pre-show match between our developmental talent. We have Captain Canada, Hank Whitman and Nuke Brown defeating Garland Dillon, Portland Bartlett, and Martin Parent in 11.53 when Captain Canada submitted Martin Parent with a Montreal Crab. Probably, um, make them an official tag team when I bring them up uh, as the Lumberjacks, because they are an official tag team down in OWC. Anyway, good match. Hopefully a little bit of improvement from everybody. And the second pre-show match, like I said, Definitely could have been on the TV show, getting us a 77 rating there. But we have High Flying Hawaiian and Kilogram defeating Gary Walker and the Puerto Rican boys in 935 when Graham and Island Boy Apollo with a Gorman aghast. Very good match. Alrighty, we then kick the show off with a 91 rated angle from Mobstar. He is, of course, joined by one member of the tag team, the crew on each side of him. And uh, he basically says that um, the boys are going to have his back up to the pay-per-view. So if Logan thinks he's going to you know, carry out any sort of shenanigans, he's got another thing coming. He's definitely got another thing coming. And the boys are prepared to, uh, you know, do what they need to do. But they're, they're obviously focused on their tag team title match for the pay-per-view, which is one of the reasons why Mobstar kind of felt so inclined to make his title rematch a steel cage match. Yeah, 91's pretty good. We move on to Logan's match, getting an 83 rating here. Very, very good, considering it's only Spencer Edmund. Uh, but Spencer is quite talented, just uh, very low popularity. I think he's only got 49. So we couldn't really put him in the main event because uh, it would have tanked. But we do have Logan Wolfsbane defeating Spencer Edmund in 1226 by pinfall with a belly to belly. Suplex, solid 92 in ring, and uh, we also have Spencer getting better at his gimmick as well. So a very good 83 rated match. Very good opening contest. All right, we then go into the squash match, which gets a 49 here, where we have Mutant defeating or destroying, probably be a, a bit of a better word to describe this one. Destroying Robin Newman in 503 by pinfall with the Tina Turner. Yeah, just a good match, good squash match for, for Mutant there, getting a 69. Yep, well-executed squash. Robin got a, a bonus for his uh, selling as well, which is pretty good to see. Um, Robin, low morale, which is unfortunate. And uh, inconsistency from Mutant, actually, which is strange. We then go into a 69 rated angle from David Stone. And of course, he's cutting a promo onto Princeton Price. Basically saying that he that he believes that Princeton hasn't really deserved 
any of the praise that he has been, you know, essentially giving himself. You know, Princeton's been talking himself up, saying that he is the prince of the coalition. Um, obviously, he's not. And David Stone wants to essentially knock him down a few pegs. And David Stone says that he is the, uh, the true heir to the future of the coalition. You know, he is the next generation. That is his stable name. We then go into a six-man tag, getting us a 68 rating here, where we have David Stone, Angry Gilmore, and Chip Munn. I forgot to put Chip in the stable, didn't I? Anyway, they defeat Prince and Price and Los Hermanos 3 in 1032 when David Stone pinned Ray Cavallero with a stone cutter. Actually, I don't even think I made the stable, did I? I don't think I did. Obviously, unofficially, during the series, we made it uh, back in what, two episodes ago? But I don't think I ever actually officially made it in the game. Anyway, big win there for next gen. And we move into an 83 rated angle this time. Coming from Matty Faith, I'm kind of thinking that having Charlie Corner even appear in this angle has possibly drug or dragged this angle down a little bit. Um... Yeah, Matty Faith obviously cutting his promo onto the GOAT, Davis Wayne Newton. Matty kind of says that, you know, he needs that that one truly big victory, the big scalp over, you know, one of the stalwart main event talents in the coalition for him to be really considered for the unified world title contendership. And he says that if he's, if he's able to beat the GOAT, then who can say that he is not deserved? Or deserving of a title shot. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, it's still an 83. It's not terrible, but I'm kind of, I kind of expect Faith to get over a 90 for his angles these days. Like I said, it might be Charlie. All right, we go into an 80 rated match where we do have the GOAT, Davis Wayne Newton, defeating Charlie Corner in 1203 by submission with an STF. Uh, apparently, yeah, well, sorry, Matty Faith at the announcing desk was pretty weak. So I was kind of wondering why that popped up. I thought that might have been Lee Bambino, but it was indeed Matty Faith. Uh, but that's pretty funny. And we get an 84 in ring for Davis and a 50 there for Charlie. But yeah, that also advanced the storyline and gained it heat as well in the process. So I'm, I'm definitely happy with that. All right, we then go into a 72 rated angle from Young and Wasted, Brett Kyle, Taylor Norton. And they say that they, they're, they're continuing the build. They're continuing the climb. You know, they've got their hands in the, the handholds and their feet in the footholds. They're going to claw their way up the, the mountain that stands in front of them, which is the Coalition Tag Team Division. And they're going to start off with the Northern Lights at the pay-per-view. We then go into the Northern Lights in a tag team or in tag team action, getting a 64 rating there. And the Northern Lights do indeed defeat Disciples of Darkness 5 in 11.55 when Riddick Jordan pinned Zombie Boy with a flying headbutt. So yeah, good match. Tag Team Specialist for the Northern Lights. Uh, original Sinner seemed off his game. But let's be honest, when is he not off his game? Yeah, good match. 64 is pretty good for them. Considering they have zero pop, they... Zombie Boy's good, but Sinner's obviously pretty terrible. Alrighty, we then go into a 96 rated angle, and this is both of them, both Aldous and Jackpot, rated on entertainment. So, safe to assume, with this angle and this match, I'm going to assume that Jackpot's going to gain a, a decent amount of popularity as a result. Uh, but as you can see, Jackpot actually worked the crowd well, so all this was the, the standout, but didn't actually get a, a positive for being off script, whereas Jackpot did. So that's pretty cool to see. The main event? Yeah, there we go. That's what I like to see. We get a 92 rated main event there. Aldous Blackfriar defeating Jackpot Jordan in 20 minutes, 21 seconds by pinfall with a bat wing. Just a really good match. Really high level talent. Uh, both of them actually. Both of them high level talents. Because Jackpot's really good, uh, but, you know, being an upper mid-carder, he's just lacking that uh, that main event level popularity, really. That's that's all it is. Everything else, 
primaries, basics, psychology, entertainment stats, even star quality, all main event level for Jackpot. He is literally just missing the, the pop to go along with it. Yeah, 92. Very happy. And a big win for Aldous in the main event. Alrighty, we finished the show. We get an 89 for this one. So a little bit lower than the last one, but also four points higher than our first show of the episode. But as you can see, unfortunately, no popularity increase, only being three points above our current popularity in Ontario. Now, the, the real thing that I want to look at right now is our popularity in Mexico. I just want to see if we got up to 22 as a result of that TV show, because that would be pretty perfect. We actually have the highest report on the articles as well. So I'm assuming we once again beat CWA. We drew with them, but we, I guess, go higher. Why do we go higher? Maybe because we had a higher rated main event? That, that could be it. That could be it. Anyway, what about our Simony Sentinel? She's only 30. Uh, one year, two months. That's unfortunate, because she's also really, really good. Really good on the microphone as well. Um, Celian Christensen. Now 36, a little bit older. Basically, basically seven months for her contract. What about Lauren Easter? Probably a long one as well. No. Well, five months. Five months for Lauren. I, I love Lauren Easter. One of my favorite female workers in the Seavers. You can kind of tell why. I mean, 85 basics, the selling 88, good consistency, 83 psychology, 92 star quality, and basically 79s for her entertainment stats as well. Incredible stuff. She's, like I said, one of my favorites. I, I would always, always try and sign her, no matter what women's division I have. Always, even if you have a heel face divide, it's a perfect, perfect heel to get in. Anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, celebrate that victory, or the double victory, actually, over the CWA. We beat them twice this episode. And we are also trying to steal away Robin DeLay. So let's, uh, let's put one more offer in for this episode. And I guess we'll continue negotiations afterwards. I wonder if I can just literally go 20%. No, I can't. Okay, so we'll just go 17k, 17,000. Nope, still not good enough. All right, we're going to have to go or increase it by 1,000s at a time. Uh, so one of two offers, not what I want. I want the best offer. Come on, man. Creeping up, 20,000 already. Probably going to be 25, maybe maybe 26, because we all know what happened last time. No, 21. But it, it, it is likely that CWA will come back, back in once again and try and um, renegotiate. Anyway, we get a 3.51 TV rating this time, so... And not too bad, a little bit lower than the last show, but the last show was also quite a, well, a little bit better. It was a little bit better. Anyway, the popularity, we're at 57 in Alberta, 64 in Saskatchewan, and we have finally achieved the 77 required in Manitoba. And we now have three regions, three regions above or at 77 or above 77. And uh, Saskatchewan's getting pretty close. We're only 13 points away. But then, unfortunately, we are, you know, another seven points. So 20 points away in Alberta. Which is probably going to take us, I would assume, to the end of the year to gain those 20 points in Alberta. I mean, in the process, we will obviously get better broadcasting deals throughout the course of this year. Uh, not only will like we'll upgrade our own broadcaster, go to very big in Canada, but we will also try and get onto a bigger... Uh, I guess TV deal. The the on dem is probably gonna gonna secede and you know not be around anymore, which which is unfortunate because we have been gaining popularity in every region. But basically, the the workaround to that that I've thought about is to actually upgrade our broadcaster in those other regions, get them up to either small or medium, which wouldn't be that expensive, um, and we could probably do go for small first in every region. Um, and then maybe the, the cheaper ones, we can go up to medium straight away. 
and then you know throughout the course of another couple of months just br bring all the uh the more expensive one up to medium as well depending on depending on how much money we have we're nearly making two million dollars per month and next month we have the double the double event so lots of good stuff there anyway let's have a look mexico we are still at 21 so it is indeed going to be next episode and uh the broadcaster in question is Celestion Mexico. As you can see, only 22 popularity required in three regions. Very, very overpowered there, getting onto our pay-per-view broadcaster. As you can see, both Oli and EMLL are, are with this provider. So that's very cool. Medium broadcasting, pro wrestling, high risk. What more could you ask for for our, our first pay-per-view broadcasting deal in a, in a country you haven't really... We haven't really focused on it. Only only recently did we uh pay the you know investment into broadcasting our own broadcaster in um in Mexico. So it's gonna pay off real quick and another sort of pay per view deal for us to to generate even more you know pay per view revenue. It's gonna well be above a million, probably like one point two million once we we get onto that pay per view broadcaster as well. Anyway, this episode's gone for way too long. We're an hour and 57 minutes now. So yeah, as always, guys, make sure you smash a like on the video. And of course, subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. I think, I believe there's only about, I think my, the dynamic is, I think it's 50, 55% of my viewers are subscribed to the channel. And then 45% of you are not subscribed. So make sure you do it. It just helps you guys find the videos. That little bit easier. Say for some reason you forget about the series, which I don't. I don't know how you could. I don't know how you could. But if if you did for for some weird reason, or you know, it uh, slips your mind, and you don't really, you know, the episodes aren't coming out too frequently at the moment. Uh, but they will over the course of the next month. Obviously, I've uh, got a lot of time off now with Christmas and holidays and stuff like that. So yeah. Make sure you subscribe, turn the notification bell on as well. Only 10.1% of you guys with that you know, bell turned on. And apart from that, guys, as always, take it easy. Thank you for the support and goodbye.